Every day, I stare out into the deep. I am blessed that I was able to get the support and funding needed. We traveled to Guam. However, none of us went on the islands to visit the locals. I'm eager to get to work. The murky depths with nothingness. Occasionally, a rogue squid would swim past and would attack the side of the submarine. The suckers clung onto the metal before it would swim away in search of living prey. I joined this expedition to explore the Mariana Trench, test the technology to see how deep we could go with living people inside, and make it back to the surface to report our findings. We will be making history. The vessel is built with the best money can buy. My task is to gather information on any wildlife we see. The further down we go, the more alien the animal life will become, and I'm determined to photograph something unique. There are a couple of things I should tell you about. The claustrophobia is difficult to adapt to. Everything is so closed in, and you feel you have nowhere to escape to. You are at the mercy of the ocean. Then there is the close quarters with the crew. Barely any privacy or space to call your own even if you get along with them. And finally, the natural sounds the ocean makes. All ones our ancestors heard years ago, before they escaped the water and moved on to land. The metal surface of the submarine creaks, the rivets strain and hold, and we go so deep, the ocean only moves when something large swims by. The lack of natural light is difficult to deal with. All that lingers is the dark and artificial light of the submarine. I didn't like getting funding through the government. It meant we had to follow their instructions, as there was a distinct military approach. How best would it serve the nation or the navy? I understand the need for security, yet some things are universal. I've dreamt of the things I will find down here. I assure you, I won't let it impact my findings. Perhaps an ancient civilization, the secrets of the universe, Perhaps, as some conspiracy theorists suggest, the Megalodon will be swimming below the surface. So far, we've traveled down to the Mariana Trench, and it is still recognizable. But we will be making history by sending drones down deep into the Challenger Trench. The captain, a good man, would approach and ask me about my research. I don't think he understood what I told him, but he listened, as did any of the other crew members. However, he would leave me to deal with things by myself. I'm shy by nature, an introvert. Hour after hour, I would review the sensors and the screens, only stepping away to shower or use the sanitary tank to use the restroom. My days all blur together. I try to keep my mind occupied through listening to various podcasts and news of the outside world. It would be too easy for me to drown out the world. We descended deeper. Instantly, it grew cold beyond belief, and the submarine was holding up. Another breakthrough. The captain and the engineers are delighted. They earned their success and celebrated with a party on the ship. They kept inviting me to attend, and I wanted to. However, there were alerts on the sensors that something was there. Large and long, it didn't match anything humanity had previously discovered. I listened to their happy cheering and music in the depths, and stared out into the black water, wondering what it was to even be human in this alien world beneath the waves. I heard a faint bloop sound. Far in the black, the water rippled, and I looked at the screen to see if it recorded it. Nothing. The cameras weren't picking it up. There had to be a glitch. I waited to hear it again. Silence. I tried to listen to the crew. No music, no chatter, nothing. I couldn't hear the ever-present hum of the submarine anymore. I stared out into the ship, waiting for some sound, and heard faint bloops on the hull. Some close, and others far. It echoed, creating an empty feeling. Hello? I called out. The lights were still on. I moved through the submarine, expecting to see someone soon, and found no one. I moved through the cabins and kept seeking out the crew. Why do you feel alone? 
The whispered voice came. It was inside my head. My voice. I stopped dead in my tracks, waiting to see if it happened again, and it was quiet. A headache rocked my skull, and I looked at the screens. The slow screensaver with the company logo slowly bounced around the screen. The tracking systems weren't showing our progress. Not that I could make sense of half of these. Hello? Where is everyone? My voice echoed again. A few of the screens flickered with static. I hadn't heard any of the escape pods being released into the water. I hurried over to the communication booth, trying to find something I could use. I pressed buttons. None of them worked. I ran my hands over my arms, pinching my skin, and felt pain. I wasn't dreaming. Who am I? Low and difficult to hear. No, no, no. The isolation must have been getting to me. It was something we were briefed on before we left, and normally I adored my solitude. I kept searching for someone, and found the only trace that somebody else had been in the ship with me. On one of the chairs was a navy uniform. I lifted the fabric to see underwear, jewelry, and under the table, socks and shoes, as though the human beneath simply disappeared. Where are they? The sound of engines kept going, ever present, and I didn't feel like we were moving forward. I looked at the radar for our location. The submarine was still. I ran to the window and looked out into the liquid black outside. The only light came from inside the ship. My heart raced. I didn't know how to work the ship and aimlessly looked around for something. Anything I could do. It started to move forward. Yes. Yes, it's... We started moving down further into the deep, slowly, and as I watched through the window, powerless to stop it. A ripple of water moved up, and there was a sharp, sudden stop. I went flying into the window frame, hitting my head before falling to the floor. I looked at my fingertips. There was blood, and I could feel the hot trickle down my forehead and cheek. It looked... different. Thicker. And it was slowly going black. It clung to my fingers, spread up my forearms, and burned my skin. I fell back, using my legs to push myself away from the sight of the injury, and saw a crack down the side. I waited for the water to burst inside. I stared up at it, waiting and ready for death. A shadow loomed at the window. Something outside was keeping the water out. I should open the door. I heard my voice inside my head. I should go outside. I should get closer. I spoke the words out loud, unable to control my lips. I brought my hand to my throat, ready and waiting for the next words to come out. I could feel it lingering. I closed my eyes. When I did so, I saw myself outside the submarine and peered inside. I saw myself on the roof, my hand around my throat, and I opened my eyes. I expected to see something outside the window. There had to be something out there. I crawled closer, peeking out and waited, when an enormous eye opened in front of me. I rested my hands on the window, in fearful awe at the underwater god, and thought I had to be dreaming. Why am I here? I whispered. No. Why are you here? Who are you? Who am I? I spoke. No. Thought them quickly. It came out a jumbled mess. Let me taste your blood. Let me taste my blood. I thought and spoke at the exact moment. I lifted my hands to my head, rubbed my forefinger inside the blood and placed it in my mouth. I could taste the typical metallic taste. No. It needs to be fresh. Fresh? I reached up again, scratched and pulled on the skin, opening it up and ignored the pain. I managed to get my fingernail under it and started to pull downward. The skin lifted up, and under the watchful eye, I dipped my fingertips in the fresh blood and put it in my mouth. Ah, oh, human. So long since I've encountered your kind. I had.
have no control anymore. What are you? I couldn't help myself. My hand shook as I resisted the urge, a tear down either cheek at the creature's eye that never blinked. I am what watches in the dark, a god that sleeps. When awake, they hear my song. Your kind dreams of me during the night, terrified and knowing the unknown. My lips moved, controlled by this being. It didn't make sense. The iris grew larger. The last time I saw your kind in the flesh was when you swam in the ocean. Innocent, barely a few cells clinging together. I want to know what you're made of. Uh, how? I knew the answer wouldn't be good. My heart rate pounded loudly, inescapable within my chest, and I was boiling. Sweat poured down my forehead and chest. I felt like my body was going to burst when it suddenly went limp. I fell back hard on the floor. The great eye was now gone. Only the empty black of the ocean remained, and I was free. The only sign it had ever happened was the memory, and the blood on my forehead. It didn't explain the loss of the crew. I heard footsteps down the corridor of the ship. Finally, I wasn't alone. Hello? There was a humanoid figure. It stared at me and went into one of the rooms. I got to my shaky feet and ran down the passageway toward it, entering the mess hall. On the small table, a corpse was spread eagle, stripped of clothing and skin. There was no blood. All the muscles were pulled back with surgical precision, laid out before me, and curiosity got the better of me. Each muscle was pulled open to reveal the inner cavity. I looked inside to see the organs had been removed. The face, what was left of it, had an open mouth with all of the teeth missing, as was the tongue. I couldn't see anything down the throat. The eyeballs were gone. Only hollowed out pits remained. I couldn't tell which crew member it had been. Who could have done this? Where was the shadow? Why didn't I see this before? I heard the loud, beeping sounds with red flashing lights. How? Oh, what now? There was a loud screaming from different areas on the ship. I didn't know where to run to. Garbled static came across the loudspeaker. It sounded like a warning. I could have sworn I heard German, Mandarin, Russian, and others. An alert system. They sounded like humans' fearful calls out into the dark and were replaced with automatic systems. Hello? I called out. The lights suddenly switched off and the engines failed. I shivered in the dark, running my hand on the walls and made my way through. I didn't know where I should go. It was better than doing nothing. I breathed a sigh of relief when the backup generators switched back on. The dim lights slid up and it caused the shadows to enlarge in distorted shapes. Please, can anybody hear me? Why did you do it? My lips moved, a slave to the eyes bidding. I didn't answer. The more I humored the voice, the worse things got. This had to be a nightmare, or some effect of being isolated, or perhaps there had been some kind of chemical leak. There were shadows around me, formless shapes that would hide whenever I'd like a closer look at them. When I stopped looking at them, or tried to move, they came closer. Their forms grew darker, and I retreated back to my observation station. The place I felt safest. I had my back against the furthest door and kept my gaze focused on it. There was nowhere to run. Why did I do it? No, I didn't do it. I saw the eye again, staring in at me, focused and unblinking. The gaze itself hurt my skin and I cowered away from it. I forgot how to speak. Why did you kill him? Where are the rest of the crew? I screamed out in the dark. It stared at me. Neither mocking nor angry in response. Your kind has not changed much. Willing to do anything to survive and content to destroy in order to save your own skins. The words came out of my mouth. I covered it with my hands, trying to keep any other words inside. They were muffled again. I couldn't let it control me. 
I ran to the med bay, ignoring the shadows at the doorways and started rummaging around the empty, sterile room. I opened up all the drawers, threw discarded contents on the floor, and found what I was looking for. A needle with a medical thread. I stirred in front of the mirror, staring into my exhausted, broken eyes, and put the thread through the eye of the needle. Weird. My eyes were never that good. And I got it the first time. I inserted the needle into my bottom lip, then upward through the underside of the top lip, then down again. I needed tight stitches so I couldn't open my mouth. I ignored the pain, gripped my teeth, and kept going. I couldn't stop now. Stitch after stitch. I could feel the tears down my cheeks and observed my handiwork. They were swollen, held tight, and traces of blood around the stitches. I waited, waiting to see if it was successful. In my thoughts, I dared to say something or try again. My weak act of defiance against the odds. A part of me couldn't believe I managed to pull it off. I leaned closer, studying the stitches, and ran my fingertips over them. Fascinated. What else could I do? I looked up at the dried blood from my head wound. The platelets had done their job, and no stitches were required. Behind me, on either side, stood two humanoid shadows who rested their hands on my shoulders. I jumped, looked backward to the empty, desolate space. When I looked into the mirror once more, I saw a pair. I could feel their hands on my shoulders pulling me, and I jumped backward, screeching through my stitched mouth and pulling on the fresh stitches, not being able to scream hurt more. I pulled at them, but it was no use. Why do your kind try to fight me? I heard the voice clear in my thoughts. Who are you? Why? I answered inside my head. No response. The shadows disappeared, and I was left alone. There was no room on board the submarine that was safe. I peered out the corridors and waited to go back to my observation deck, like a feral animal obsessed with its den. I started to run back. My feet made sound on the metal surface and was replaced with running over a thick gel substance. I ignored it, hoarsely breathing through my nose since my mouth was sealed until I finally got back. For the first time during the whole ordeal, I felt hunger. I was ravenous and felt like I hadn't eaten for months. I looked for my secret stash of snacks and found it intact. A bag of my favorite chips ones that were associated with positive memories from childhood until the present day. The bag was shiny, perfect. The logo was a chip with a cherry, happy grin that appeared out of place in the current scenario. I tried to pull apart my lips, but they didn't budge. Uh, that's it. I needed scissors. I didn't have any in my room, so I had to travel back through to the med bay. Confident since I made the journey before. I jogged there through the questionable slime on the floor and found the ransacked place I had been previously. Except, this time, mold lines the walls in circular patterns, clinging to the corners and filling my nostrils with a damp, sickly smell. Rust coated the equipment. It... it didn't make any sense. It had been fine moments ago. I didn't want to spend more time here than I had to. I looked around for any sign of medical scissors in the unopened drawer before moving through what was on the floor. The pieces went everywhere, and I had finally found what I was looking for. Covered in a sterile wrapper, I held it in my hands and ran back to my observation deck, then stopped. I saw the red striped, hunched over back of a person facing me, walking back and forth as they crouched on the ground. I could hear loud chewing, crunching, and I realized they had been eating my chips. I ripped the scissors from the wrapper, held them with the tip downward, and grabbed the person by the stringy remnants of their hair. She looked up at me, her pale blue eyes wide and fearful. Her hands went up defensively. She grabbed my arm, yet she was so frail it didn't work. I drove the tip of the scissors into her neck. Once. Twice, a third time. It was hard to get it through her skin, and finally, I had to settle for lifting her head to expose her neck and slit her throat. 
her blood painting my last refuge in this nightmare. She struggled, coughed, and the pain in her eyes was unbearable. I felt guilty. I leaned down and cradled her body as she passed away. My humanity returned to me. Her lips moved, a final confession I could not understand. I wondered why she had difficulty speaking, and opened her mouth to reveal her tongue had been cut out. I checked her body for more signs of disfigurement. First, her hands, and saw her fingernails had been ripped off. Chunks, her hair had been pulled out, leaving sore, bald spots. Her uniform had been torn. I recognized her face, but I couldn't recall her name. I looked down the front of her uniform and saw she had slices in her breasts, chest, and stomach. I couldn't tell if these wounds were done by somebody else or if they were self-inflicted. I lay her down, closed her eyes, and felt numb. I used the scissors to cut the stitches and opened my mouth, relieved. Stretching it wide and yawned when I realized that I was locked in this position. My mouth held open. I tried to close it using my hands, and nothing worked. I felt the eyes return. At the window, it watched me, and I couldn't tell if it enjoyed my suffering or not. You wanted to open your mouth. Why do you try to close it now? The voice in my thoughts. I ignored it, kept the pressure on my head and jaw, and closed it. It was frozen, but slowly I was able to close it, and while it was stiff, feeling was not brought back to it again. I opened and closed it slowly, feeling fortunate that I had control over it once more. Did I like killing her? I spoke out loud and couldn't hear its voice that time. I looked down at her corpse. I realized she had bite marks in her arms on the sides closest to her mouth and lifted her arms to get a better look. Some were healed, others were fresh, like she tore into herself moments before finding my food, and I picked up her body, then dumped it in the nearby storeroom. The shadow figures had returned, watching me from the corridors, and their whispering started again. This time it was louder, more vicious, and I knew they were angry with me. I came back, using one of my blankets to try to mop up the blood, and it got heavier as time went on. I went out and threw the blood-clogged blanket into one of the storage cupboards. How could any of this happen? Are you hungry? I spoke the words using its voice. The truth was, the murder had distracted me momentarily from my stomach. And now, all the thirst returned full force. My stomach growled loudly, ached, and I clutched tightly. Maybe you should alleviate yourself of the problem. No. No. I won't eat her. I won't eat myself. I answered, shaking my head, and I imagined myself sinking my teeth into my flesh tearing and devouring myself in the same way she had. Would I even be able to stop once I started? No, I didn't mean that. Yes, you, I do. I looked at the scissors on the floor, still coated in blood with small pieces of skin still clinging to it. I picked them up, holding them close to my face, and wondered which would be the least painful. To eat my own flesh to feast on hers, or the next solution. I unbuttoned my uniform at the front, moved my vest aside, and stared down at my exposed skin. I was thinner than what I remembered, bones protruding out, and I watched the steady breathing. Go on, I'd like a better view. Without looking, I knew the eye was there again ever the guiding spectator. I turned toward the window in hopes of complying with the terror would encourage it to be merciful. I rested the tip of the scissors on my sternum. I hesitated, unwilling to continue. But the more I looked at my skin, I had to eat. I had to feed. I was famished. 
I kept the tip steady, held it outward, and stabbed, grit my teeth, and steadily pulled it downward. The scissors by this point weren't very sharp, so I had to pull roughly to get through. I moved out to my left side meticulously, not wanting to harm myself more than I had to. I did the same to my right. I have no surgical training, but knew I'd have to deal with the pain, blood loss, and the abdominal muscles in front. The underlayers of skin ached, exposed to the air. Wait, what was I doing? No, stop. I'm not going to do it. We've come so far. Why not continue? My hand shook violently, and I had to hold it away from me. The lure to... to it... was getting stronger. I'm... I'm not going to butcher myself. I threw the scissors across the room to stop myself from continuing. It hit the wall beside the unflinching eye and fell on the floor. We've already come so far together. No. I argued with myself. My head jerked and twisted sharply in either direction, each of us battling for control over my meat suit. My body, without my control, scurried through the blood, trying to pick up the scissors, and I clutched them at the last minute. My fingernails broke in jagged chunks as the eye and I battled for control. Breathing heavily, with jerky movements, I aimed to stab myself in the stomach and missed. I cracked my front teeth when I gripped them hard together. It would not win. I didn't want to, but it was the only choice I had. I clenched my right fist, hitting the floor hard several times and hearing a crack, driven on by desperation and soon followed with my right, my dominant hand, then broke each finger at a time. The feeling of defiance, even against the raging unknown, felt good. My bones pierced the skin, and I looked down at my broken hands. The eye watched me. I could feel it inside me, and no matter how much I fought... Look at me. No. I had to stop it. I reached up with my fingers. Look at yourself. Our voices blurred. I reached in, plunged a shattered finger behind my eye, and screamed while I pulled it out. It popped out of my eye sockets, with the connective tissues still clinging on. I still had some sight out of it. I had to continue. I needed to finish what I started. I did the same to the left eye and pulled it out. Both eyeballs swayed down in front of me, and I cradled them in my hands. How was I still able to see? I knew it was wrong. I shouldn't look, but I held up my eyes to the window. The eye glared at me, moving only to study what was inside my hands, and it was silent. No anger, no demands. There was no pleasing it. I walked over on my knees, the moist slurry of gore on the floor, and knelt in front of the window. I can do more. I know I can. Its voice came from my lips again. I couldn't hold it off. Letting my right eye hang down, I struck myself in the face repeatedly, and heard the crunch of teeth. I spat the bloody tooth on the floor to the unrelenting eye. Then another fell, and the eye stared down. I could feel myself close to the brink. I could barely remember my name, my purpose, or why I had come down into the ocean. I was lost. I longed to see what was happening to me, and all I felt was nothing but a stinging ache over my body. I have all learned so much about your kind from yourself and your crew. Your violent tendencies toward yourselves and others you keep hidden. Your flesh and what makes you all tick. So similar and so different. Why? Why do all this to us? I am a nightmare made flesh, and you woke me up. Darkness fell. The submarine creaked loudly. 
The terror releasing its firm grip on the ship with large, spanning tentacles expanding outward, and the eye moved backward. The submarine drifted down with the lights flickering downward into the void, only to be sharply halted by yet another terror. Another eye surrounded by a pale white skin stared in at me while the lights went out.